Iceland. Wow. <laughs> um, maybe it's uh, a mixture of many things. In Iceland, we have this saying, Fetaradast. And these two words, they capture the, the real spirit of Iceland. The spirit of Iceland is amazing, but contradictory because Iceland really respects, like, rugged individualism and individual strength. But we are also able to come together as a whole and support one another. Naturally colorful and quirky. <laughs> because I think we, we rely a lot on our nature here and our nature is very diverse. Fetaradast, which is all about there being a solution to any problem. There will always be a solution at the end of the day. The spirit of Iceland is can do kind of going with the flow, you know, ebbs and flows and going with the flow, it, it will be okay and we can do. That's the spirit of Icelanders. We are like, we'll make it, it's okay. We'll get there. A hard thing to pinpoint, I would say, but when I think about it, I believe that we are very much um, inspired and um, shaped by the nature around us and the energy. Resilience, sense of strong community. I think we are very proud people. We like to show the world that we are small, but we are strong. Very magical, from the fierce storms that we have to the magical northern lights, it's everything in between. I've um, seen miracles happen using only this Tetaretas thing. I hate it, I never use it myself, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it work. The spirit of Iceland. I think that the people that came before me definitely needed the resilience to weather the storm that was in their faces. I am the first person in Iceland to step forward and claim my rights as a gay man. That happened 1st of August, 1975. Coming from Reykjavik and experiencing Iceland and Reykjavik in the 80s, where uh, gay people lived in total silence, um, were completely invisible. We need pride, which is a very powerful instrument. We need to have it everywhere. Part of that is to dispel the upbringing or the conditioning that what we are is something to be ashamed of. When queer people grow up, I think we're often told that our thoughts and feelings are not normal or wrong in a lot of cases. And to me, pride is about going completely against that. Pride to me personally um, means acceptance. Uh, to me, pride, uh, it's a celebration. It's for us all. It's about love. It's about standing together, respect each other. But at the same time, uh, time for self-reflection. Pride is a monument to love, to equality, human rights. It's a monument to all the achievements that have been made within the community and for the community. And we are telling uh, young people who might be struggling that this is not something to be scared of, not something that will haunt them or ruin their lives. People feel happy. I mean, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with loving whoever you want to love? Hiding who they are is going to do much more damage to them 
than coming out ever could. It's a result of, of decades of fight. When responsible people uh, do and say responsible stuff out there, it affects the whole nation in a very short amount of time. We concentrated on the legal battle. We talked about it from the very beginning. Our purpose is to connect with the parliament members and start changing the laws to protect us, that was, and at the same time, inform people. Pride became a way to express that you were alive and that you were uh, a member and a part of this society. I was closeted and depressed and uh, basically things were stuck in a huge annoying rut for about 10, 15 years. It's what they call coming out of your shell. I think feel like it really happened like that for me. Things really changed. Reykjavik Pride started really small. It was just a handful of really brave people who simply took a walk. We managed to do this uh, in the early 90s. 70 to 80 people marching. This gave us courage to organize a parade that would go down Laugavegur, which is our main street. In the year 2000. I actually took part in the parade right away. Uh, obviously, I was rather deeply closeted at the time. There came this moment in time that I will never forget as long as I live. That's when I could actually see with my own eyes lines of people from all over waiting on both sides of the sidewalk, waiting for us, cheering us on. I had so much fun and it was such a liberating experience and feeling that the message was spreading. Even people who are not on the spectrum want to go there to show their support. I, th I think that's pretty special. The experience was very strong and I think it was super emotional for me, even if I didn't really say it at the time. But looking back, it's such a great feeling to actually feel uh, accepted by the community. First time I experienced it, I just saw it on TV sort of, or in the news. And it was kind of awesome. It was something I, at that time, didn't know was possible or allowed even. I remember the first time I walked. I remember the feeling. This is the result of the fight. Everything I went through, survived murder attempts, everything. Here I am, and this has happened. Results. I, I think it's just pure happiness. And it feels like love, you know? What's different about Pride in Iceland compared to other places is everyone shows up. Everybody's ready to go to a party and have fun. So this is a very powerful way of celebrating. But I think it's rather unique that this has become a public family holiday. It's a wonderful festivity. It's, it's such a wonderful day. And I think just having people cheering you on and showing up for you, it, it really means a lot because you you feel like everyone's got your back. I don't think any of us who were part of Pride, who were participating in Pride, who were organizing Pride, really understood how socially important Pride became. Pride, it, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with being Icelandic or being gay. It's the spirit of us humans 
when we need it, when we really need it, we work together, and that's the most important thing. We went from literally nothing to full equal rights. I think we are all aware that uh, human rights and an open and inclusive society is something that we all need to take care of and protect. One of the most important things that Pride did is show us that this wasn't some nameless other, some faceless mob that you didn't know about. The Pride showed regular Icelandic people that these were their friends, their colleagues, their family, their cousins or their aunts and uncles. And I think that was the watershed moment. I think that sort of led people to realize that this was just a, another facet of society. Visibility is super important and we all need role models in our lives. I remember just when I was coming out, I didn't have many role models, you know, when it came to the visibility of lesbians. With more representation, uh, more people, uh, young queer youth, will feel more validated in their identity to be themselves earlier in life, which is a great thing. Visibility needs to be more, and I think pride actually plays a big role there. It's, uh, it's kind of like the flamboyant edition of it. Um, but if you think about it throughout the years, we, ha we sometimes we need the extremes to actually uh, break some boundaries. I think that Pride has had a huge effect on how the LGBTQ society is supported, respected, and a part of society. Not to toot my own horn, but I, I kind of think electing a transgender city council speaker is a rather valuable moment of representation. And we are realizing Earth is our only home, and our spirit is common, it's worldwide. So this is the, 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 the core, it's the human spirit. We've come a long way, but we've done a good job.